The Swedish state has committed plenty of atrocities against its own people during the last century. The most notable ones are the forced sterilizations and the forced institution care many children were put into during the mid 20th century, care that has reduced in scale yet is still being handed out in today's society. From the 1930s to 1976, when forced sterilizations were made illegal in Sweden, 63,000 people were sterilized. Most of these procedures were more or less forced. 31,000 were voluntary, 21,000 fully forced, and the rest something in between, with various degrees of coercion. For a long while, the sterilizations had been a national secret, but during the 1990s they were brought up for discussion and the victims started asking for compensation. The government decided that people who had been forcibly sterilized would be able to apply for a sum of 175,000 Swedish crowns or $20,000 during a two-year period. After this, the matter would be considered settled and no one that missed the time window would be able to get any compensation. Many victims of the procedure felt it was insulting that he had to apply for the compensation when the government had all the information needed on file anyway and could just pay it out. The Swedish state has also forcibly put many children in foster care even though their parents could care for them. In 1950, when Sweden had a population of 7 million, nearly 35,000 children were in foster care. It's estimated that at least 2.5% of the children growing up between 1950 and 1980 spent their childhood in institutions. If not all of it, then at least part of it. The current centrist government launched an investigation in 2007 into what these children went through in these institutions. The people interviewed relate how they were physically, mentally and sexually abused in these institutions, which the social democrats presented abroad as such a blessing to these children. The children weren't told why they had been institutionalized, how long they would be there or what was going to happen to them and they were moved around a lot without being given time to settle down. An organization called Stulen Barndom, Stolen Childhood in English, has been formed to attempt to get compensation for the people who for no valid reason were put into these institutions. In 2006, they started forming a class action lawsuit with people who grew up in institutions, demanding compensation from the municipalities in question. Class action lawsuits didn't exist in Sweden until 2003, and all but one of the attempts at such lawsuits have been rejected. The court of Stockholm rejected trying this matter. The organization appealed to the next court as well as to the Supreme Court, who all rejected trying it. The Supreme Court argued that since everyone has had different experiences of this abuse, there can be no collective case no class action lawsuit. Stulen Barndom then proceeded to appeal to the Court of Europe. The European Court of Human Rights also rejected the lawsuit, though this court expects national courts to deal with these matters, which the Swedish courts neglect to do. The atrocities committed in the Swedish welfare system have garnered international attention. Several cases of families whose children have been taken by the Swedish authorities have made it into American media, even into Newsweek magazine. The most well-known of these was an article published in the respectable German magazine Der Spiegel on the 1st of July 1983. On the morning of the 3rd of May 1979, half a dozen police officers in civilian clothing surrounded Magell's house in Bromma. Two social workers broke into the house through the terrace and left a few minutes later with the 14-year-old Eva Magrell. Left behind was a mother paralyzed by fear. And as is almost always the case with these procedures, an administrative court confirmed the decision of the social services this time as well. Coercive measures by the social services as to once against the families Lilja and Magrell, by which children are separated from their parents through brutal force, are in Sweden neither single nor extreme cases. Nowhere else in the West did the welfare state become as complete as in this country 
which still doesn't hesitate to accuse other parts of the world of violations of human rights. All too often, however, the lawyer Berita Sundberg Weitman finds, the social services use completely normal family conflicts and developmental crises of the children and adolescents, sometimes even their own prejudices, as justification for the decision to take children from their childhood homes. Partly can children be taken from a well-ordered home because parents belong to a religious minority or display deviating cultural or intellectual interests. The house was unbelievably filthy and untidy, the hygienic condition in the kitchen, bathtub and toilet beneath contempt. Beer boxes, beer cans, wine and liquor bottles were all over the house when we visited. The social services had placed the dirty children in state care into this neglected home, among them epileptic and disabled children. Ekeby is not an exceptional case. For the lawyer Lennart Hane, who has learned a lot in his long fight against the nationalization of our children, there is a simple reason for the placement into institution care. The admission of children into care is often pure business. A sad example. For many years, the social services in several suburbs of Stockholm employed a man suspected of sexual molestation against his wards as institution father. A dozen children in state care went into his house, several of them, girls as well as boys, also into his bed, he admitted, after the public prosecutor's office had finally pressed charges. The district court of Solna convicted him of fornication with minors. Danelius explained openly that human rights conventions like those of the Council of Europe from 1950 and those of the UN from 1966 were not binding in Swedish courts. They are not to be used by Swedish courts. That is our perspective on all international agreements. Even now in 2009, the Swedish social services operate in very much the same way, with 21,500 children committed into foster care at some point in 2007, and over 15,000 children on average placed into care. 5,000 were forcibly committed, though in many of the 10,000 voluntary placements, it's likely that coercive measures and threats were used to make parents agree with the placement. Foster care is a very expensive affair in Sweden, with official average cost per child and day in institution care being 3.5 to 